بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین الصلاۃ والسلام علی رسول الکریم اما بعد رب شرح علی صدری و یسر علی عمری و اہل العقدۃم السانی یفق قولی الحما علم نما ینفا ونفا انا بما علم تنا و ذدنا علما وی آر اسٹڈینگ ابراہیم علیہ السلام's dream and the onslaught of Gog and Magog. We've reached Alhamdulillah, the end of our online course on the subject, and we have tried to understand how to make sense of this dream of Ibrahim salam in the light of various ayat. So it's traditionally understood in a particular way as if it was a command of Allah. But when you take all of the other ayat of the Quran into consideration, you see that there is an explicit prohibition on human sacrifice, killing of children. And then you also have that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stops Ibrahim from doing something. So that means, is in essence, it wasn't an actual command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his prophet to literally sacrifice his son as is traditionally understood. So we concluded that it may be a case of misinterpretation because it is not in the Quranic text, but it is in the understanding of the ayat or a case of biblical influence on the tafsir, on the explanation of the Quran that was very prevalent at that time. So with keeping all of that in mind, then the question that needs to be asked is, when, when you have something like this, our, our solution to the problem was that this dream actually is a dream, a dream being a message from the future. It has implications for the future of the progeny of Ibrahim salam, Ismail salam, being the son of Ibrahim salam. So his sacrifice means a sort of a sacrifice of his progeny, the progeny, the lineage of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Okay, so all of our understanding has to be consistent now with another branch of study, with, with a completely different era, I would say, which is because the Prophet وسلم, is from the lineage of Ibrahim alayhi salam through Ismail alayhi salam, through his, you know, his hadith, through his words, this understanding of ours should be confirmed. It should be verified through his words. All of these things should fall into place and all of these things should be harmoniously connected to each other. That's how we can understand the subject. So that is why we're going to talk about another dream. Gog and Magog now enter the world stage. Now this is going to be, inshallah, very interesting. So while the Muslims suffered greatly in the early years of Islam, but what was about to be witnessed would be way more horrific. So, like we said, we have to confirm this understanding of the dream through the, uh, the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He has to confirm it through his visions, through the revelation that he received. So, of course, from the very first days of Islam, Muslims were persecuted. But what was about to be witnessed, the future actually gets more and more problematic for the Ummah of Rasulullah The Prophet saw a dream, most probably in Medina, as uh, we are told. When he was in Medina, he did not reveal the details, but he woke up with his face red with horror. And Keep in mind, the Prophet ﷺ was somebody who was very, very calm and composed. Even the most difficult of situations would not, you know, perturb him. He was not the kind who would get disturbed easily. And when you have somebody like that wake up with your face flush red and scared almost, you have to understand that the Prophet ﷺ has seen something really horrific. He exclaimed, in, after seeing the dream, destruction is upon the Arabs. This is a hadith in Sahih Bukhari. An opening has been made in the barrier of Gog and Magog. So while he is in Medina, he sees this dream and he is very, very sort of disturbed by it. And he says that 
Now, the barrier of Gog and Magog will be destroyed. This is in the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, the question then is, who are Gog and Magog? The answer to that we'll cover, inshallah, in the next uh, part, the next lesson, the last lesson. But the question, the, the observation that we need to make with this hadith here, destruction is upon the Arabs. Today I have seen that one, uh, the, the barrier of Zulkarnain being destroyed. This dream shows that essentially it was within the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ that the barrier of Zulkarnain was destroyed. It, the destruction of that barrier that held these, these tribes, the, the, the destructive tribes of Gog and Magog, in the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ, the destruction of that barrier had commenced. That is one of the most important observations that we need to make with this hadith. And inshallah, let's cover this in detail in the next lesson.